Now, Doc, you write this in your notepad. Because you're going to want to remember this. You see, Doc, I'm small, but I'm a good fighter. I took baseball a long time. And I got in that cage, and I could whack that baseball. And I had the baseball bat hidden under my bed, Doc. And so I pretended that night that I was just going to go to sleep, you know? And let it have its way with that dog and take it and eat it and whatever it wanted to do. And so I said, take that dog. He's just whining all the time, driving crazy. I can never sleep. Take that dog. I turn my back to the closet and cover my head. I reach my hand down the crack of the bed and make sure the bat's nearby. And then it's getting real quiet. I hear a little shuffling sound. And then I hear a sound. It sounds like... <coughs> almost like a door screeching open, Doc. And it took every ounce of my willpower not to turn around and confront this thing. And I'm laying there in bed now. And I can hear something. <laughs> and I get the little mirror that my dad uses to shave. And I hold it up just right, Doc. I'll never forget what I saw. <laughs> I saw an arm about 12 feet long with four joints. Reaching out. Grabbing my dog by the scruff of the neck. <coughs> closet door slammed. That's when I got up. I grabbed the bat. I hopped over to the closet and I kicked open the door as best I could. <coughs> and I saw it, Doc. <laughs> I saw it and I smelled it, Doc. Right there. All the faces pressing up. There's my mom's face and my dad's face pressing through the skins. It's all bubbling, see through the skin, and I'm hitting it. And I'm hearing sticks cracking, Doc. Like a ribs breaking or something. I hit it hard, Doc. And I hit the arm, it knocks down, my dog falls down, scampers away, runs away. I never saw it again, Doc. Never saw it again. And I'm in there banging on the closet, and that's when Mom and Dad came home. For two days, I'd been in that closet just banging on the walls until I beat off all the plaster. And all you could see were the slats behind the plaster, Doc. And some old camel hair that they put there a long, long time ago to hold it together, Doc. And I'm in there sweating, screaming, and crying, Doc. And that's when they said, you better talk to the school counselor. And that's when I started running. I've been running ever since. What you see, the clothes on me, those are the clothes I've got. Okay, and winter comes, that's the coat I've got. And that's it. Okay, Doc. Now I need someone to help me. Because the other day, when I was sleeping out under the bridge, I heard that slimy sound of something scooping along the cement. I don't know if it has legs. But it was rolling its way along somewhere under there by the sloppy ravine. And in the morning I saw the trail, Doc. It's following me. It's intelligent. How does it know? How does it know? I've seen things, Doc. Can't you help me? Can't someone please help me? I couldn't believe what I heard. I wish I recorded on my recorder. This kid was crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> I thought about giving him an injection and calling the loony bin right then and there to put this kid away. <laughs> Whoa. Never heard a story quite like that, you know? Uh, I'm a school counselor. I've seen a lot of weird things. A lot of weird things in my days. But this kid, I'll never forget. All right, son, we need to make a plan here. I know you've been through a lot. It's probably something to do with your parents abandoning you and running off and leaving you there alone in that scary house. It's probably something to do with, and I, hear me out, I hate to say it, but when you were using the bat, you probably lost your temper and maybe you hit the dog or something. I'm just telling you, well, listen, I'm just telling you, you've got to face the truth here and quit making up stuff. It's called displaced guilt phenomenon. That's what you've got. You're taking this guilt from one thing and putting it on another thing and creating this creature in your mind and it's all just a figment of your... Kid, come back. What are you doing? He's getting up. He's leaving. <laughs> Kid, come back. We're just starting. We got a lot of things. We're making a lot of good progress here. A lot of good bonding, you and me, son. Get, kid. He's holding on to the door to leave. Doc, I wish...
wish I could have trusted you, Doc. I wish you would have believed me. Kid, come back. Kid, come get back here. Secretary? <coughs> Secretary? <coughs> this kid, we need to stop him. Call the police. She's out to lunch. She's fired. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, well. Sometimes they come and sometimes they go. You can't always help everybody, right? I mean, I'm a therapist. I try to be a good therapist. I've only been doing it a while, but you know, I try. So I sit back down and shrug my shoulders. The kid's gone. I look at my ham on rye. Thank goodness I get a chance to eat a little bit again. Except I'm hungry for something bigger now. I haven't even been able to eat. That's when I hear it. He's out in the hallway. I think he's coming back. Oh, this kid's a little bit crazy. Now that he's told me his secrets, I'm going to become kind of like his guilt thing, you know? When he sees me, he's going to take it out on me, right? Oh, great. Okay, so he's, he's coming back. He might, he might be a little dangerous. Hopefully he has no weapons. Okay, I'll just sit here and bravely face him and, and tell him I'm calling the police and we're going to work this out together. He's out in the outer lobby. He's coming towards my door now. Uh, I think I'm going to hide. <laughs> oh, dog. Oh, dog. I'm worried about something, dog. You're probably wondering, dog. Why I came back, Doc. <laughs> oh, Doc. <laughs> I've seen some things, Doc. <laughs> and now, I have one question for you, Doc. I have one question for you. I saw you writing in your little notebook there, Doc. You wrote down my address, and I never told you my address. And Doc, what did you do with my coat? Doc, what did you do with my coat? Doc, where'd you put my coat? <laughs> that kid was really getting on my nerves. But yet at the same time, I loved him. Oh, he interrupted my lunch. And now, I'm hungry for something a little more. He opened up the closet. <laughs> I was waiting for him in the closet. <laughs> I reached out my 12 foot arm and scratched it on his breast bone. <laughs> and now you see, he's one of us.